Welcome to the Muxall Open IoT channel. I am your host, Michael Crane. Okay, so for our second part, we want to solder a, a piece of coax on there. And you might be wondering why. And uh, this one's not really soldered on the way I, I wanted it. This is a, a test I was doing. Uh, but, as you can see, this, this connector sticks out of the side of the board, which on the uh, Muxall Pro Barbecue Controller is, is not good. Uh, especially if you're trying to get it into a tight enclosure. So what we want is we want the cable to come straight off the PCB like that and not out like that. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is we want to cut, and like I said, the, the connector on the end doesn't matter. You can use SMA, um, female, or RPSMA female. So okay, so we're gonna cut this. All right, and and these are coax cables. And if you don't own a pair of strippers like this, you should go buy some. <laughs> they are definitely worth it. I think my strippers right here are. Uh, are too small the these cutouts are too small for this coax I could I could change these cutters out but I'm not going to but I'm gonna very carefully just use them to cut the outside sheath of this um <laughs> well I didn't I don't think I cut it enough there we go You don't want to cut the uh, the braid the braid inside this coax. Yeah, you don't want to cut this right here, right? Because that's the ground. Okay. So now we're gonna carefully unbraid it. So I'm trying not to rip too much too much of this ground off. It's ground braiding, but as you can see where I'm going with this, I'm basically gonna make two wires, <laughs> right? Okay, so there's one, and now we just need to strip our other guy here. Let's see, what is he about? About 24 gauge. Okay, so before I go any further, and I forget, like I did last time, or the first time I did this, is uh, <laughs> we want to make sure we put some um, heat shrink on here. And it's probably easier to put on before you strip it, as you'll undoubtedly know, but I always seem to forget it for some reason. Okay, so we'll throw that back there. All right, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and and pre-tin both these guys with some solder. Oh, yeah, let's go ahead and I'll just add a little bit of flux on here. You don't really need to add flux. I, I have rosin core solder, but I find this makes it a little bit, flow a little bit smoother. And... That's what we want. We want smooth and easy. Yeah, normally I would put this in a vise, but since I'm using my microscope camera, I can't fit my vise underneath it. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right. Okay, so if you didn't watch the previous video, I will uh, I will quickly show you how to remove the antenna from 
the ESP32. And I am not going to, I don't try to salvage it. You can try using uh, Chip Quick uh, or Quick Chip, I forget what it's called, uh, to, if you want to save the antenna. I don't have any plans on putting them back on. So I'm just going to cut all the legs off this antenna. Be very careful, these, these pads rip off extremely easy. Oh, yep. <laughs> Just as I was saying, these pads rip off extremely easily. So, as you can see, I ripped one of the pads off. Uh, and so, these two back pads right here are for <laughs> uh, just, just to support the antenna. Um, you can see the pad right there on the antenna. <laughs> so, if you do this, don't worry about it. And, and what I suggest is, we, before you cut any of them, make sure to cut these, these two right here first. Because these right here are the ones you're going to be connecting these wires up to, okay? So, so this isn't bad. Don't, don't worry about it if you do it. Uh, I'm, unfortunately, I did it on video, so I'm not going to try deleting it out. I just thought I'd show you that they are very easy to um, rip off. And, and if you're real careful, you can get in there and, and clip this guy. But yeah, you try to pull up on that antenna any after you cut these first two, and that pad's just going to come right off. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit of flux to these guys. Uh, it, these ESP32s are soldered with lead-free solder. Soldering iron needs to be 350 degrees C or so. Let's take these guys off. This this ground is uh, sinks a lot of heat, so you have to apply quite a bit of heat on this guy to get it off. Yep, see, I swiped it right off. The positive was no problem because <laughs> it doesn't have a, a big ground plane to, to sink the heat out of. And we're going to get some solder wick here. Clip some of this old stuff off. And I always put a little bit of liquid rosin flux on my uh, solder wick. It seems to help. Yeah, don't forget you got to add quite a bit of heat to this ground. Yeah, it doesn't want to heat up. All right, that's what you want. You want the pads nice and clean. All right, I'm going to add a little bit more flux on there. Okay, so this is going to be the positive, this is going to be the negative, and we're going to make a little bit of some adjustments here. I'm going to bend this guy up, and they need to be fairly close because they're going to go, you know, like that, and we're going to cut them even with each other. We don't need much, but yeah, something like like that right there. Okay. And then we're going to solder them on right there. But we want them standing up. So I'm going to bend the ends up like that. Okay. All right. So it's going to stand. Oops, like that on the board. Oh, sorry, you can't. Can you see that? <laughs> sorry, I got my hand in the way. Yeah, so it's going to stand like that on the PCB. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is add a little bit of solder to these pads. And I'm going to very carefully try to do this without covering up the camera.
Okay, so <laughs> it's a little bit harder when you're doing this on video, but uh, the first thing you want to do is, is get everything bent and staged. So you want to make sure that, you know, these pins line up with the pads. They're bent the way you want them. Because like I said, you do not want to try to bend these things uh, when they're soldered to these pads. You will rip these pads off and you will not be happy. Okay. So, it's, so now I'm just going to, we've already applied solder to both pads. I'm just going to very carefully just set the soldering iron on top of this wire. And this wire. Oops. Yeah, I'm melting the plastic. Don't melt the plastic headers. That's bad. All right. Well, that ground is, it's okay. The positive looks good. I might try to push that ground on just a bit. A bit more. Yeah, get more solder on that guy. Yeah, that looks better. Okay. And if you got some some little stragglers there, you can kind of clean them up if you want. Oops. I don't know. It looks pretty good, actually. There we go. All right. There. Okay. Okay, so now that you've got your wire soldered on there at a 90 to degree angle to the board, or maybe I should say perpendicular, uh, be very careful at this stage. You'll rip those pads right off there. I cannot stress that enough. We need to add more mechanical strength, and we also need to add a little bit of protection in between uh, these two wires right here. And actually, it's, it's not too bad. I don't think they're going to touch, but if you want, you can kind of, you can just gently, gently, you know, spread that out. And then we're going to add a little bit of hot glue, right? So, yeah, so what we're doing is we're we're giving it a little bit of strain relief <laughs> with the hot glue, okay? And that way it, it takes some of the um, uh, mechanical pressure off of the pads. Okay, that looks, that looks pretty good. So, then the last step is I'm going to kind of Push this heat shrink down to, woo! Okay, so I got the heat shrink pushed down to it. Go ahead and shrink the heat shrink. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay, so I went ahead and added a little bit. I, I was looking at it under the microscope, and because uh, I can't hardly see through the camera LCD, and and I went ahead and added a little bit more hot snot here to uh, give it a little bit better mechanical strength, and uh, yeah, that that looks pretty good. <laughs> don't don't get it in the headers. That that would be bad. Um, but yeah, okay. And you can you can take these off if you want. It doesn't matter. They they don't do anything. Uh, and uh, oh, another thing I forgot to mention: you you can clean this uh, before you put the hot snot on there. I I didn't, um, but it would probably be a good idea to do it to um, uh, it probably make the hot snot stick a little better, right? Here's a shot from the other side. 
As you can see, we're pretty flush right here, so that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. We've got our hot snot coming all the way down over the PCB right there. Give it some mechanical strength. Hey, that's that's going to be good. This is this is strong. I mean, you can't rip it off, obviously, but but you can't do that with any connector. So so there you have it. So let's plug this guy in and uh, see how it works. Yeah, one last item before <laughs> I uh, I let you go. In case you're wondering how it's going to uh, fit on the board, for those of you that are familiar with these ESP32s and how they plug into the barbecue controller, um, that's what it looks like. And you're probably wondering, well, how can making it go 90 degrees down uh, do anything for you? And, and that's how it does it. So... So with these controllers, it's some of the, the openings for the, the or the cutout for the, um, to mount these barbecue controllers is just a tad bigger than the size of the PCB. And that's why something like this, you know, is going <laughs> to really be a problem, right? So with it like this, even though it's pointing the opposite direction you can take it and you can fold it very carefully up underneath there like that so you can get it inside the the cutout then when it gets inside the cutout it'll just boing back and and uh but anyway that's why you want the the <laughs> the, hot, the hot glue on there to give it some strain relief and um and as you can see it works pretty good don't forget you can support the Muxall Open IoT channel by donation using a credit card and PayPal or by purchasing products at the Muxall store. Details and links are in the description under this video. Well, that's it for this video. If you liked the video, give it a big thumbs up, that helps, and hit the subscribe button, that really helps. If you have any questions or comments, post them in the comments under this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.